Hello and welcome to yet another video review of a great paper recently published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. The study's objective was to see if there were symptoms in the four weeks preceding sudden cardiac arrest that could predict the event. Furthermore, the authors looked if doing something about these symptoms, calling the ambulance or seeing a doctor, were associated with improved outcomes. This is a super important topic. Sudden cardiac arrest is a major public health problem. Think about it. Over 550,000 people experience sudden cardiac arrest each year in the U.S. alone. Sudden cardiac arrest accounts for more than half of cardiovascular deaths. The survival rate is only 7%. So if we had a way to predict who was going to have sudden cardiac arrest and who wouldn't could help us save lots of lives. Well, in fact, we do now because of this study. The study's title is Warning Symptoms Are Associated with Survival from Sudden Cardiac Arrest by Marion et al. The data came from the Oregon SUDS trial. Now, this has nothing to do with SOAP SUDS, but stands for Sudden Unexpected Death Study. It's a large community-based trial of deceased and surviving patients with sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA, in Portland, Oregon. Now, if you're like me, you might be a little unsure where exactly Portland, Oregon is. Well, it's right here. Data acquisition took place between 2002 and 2012. Overall, 16 hospitals participated. Patients were included in this retrospective analysis if they were between 35 and 65 years of age and if they either survived or died from sudden cardiac arrest, which was defined as unexpected loss of pulse without obvious extracardiac causes and rapid collapse with specific resuscitation records available. Symptoms that occurred during the four weeks preceding the event were assessed through interviews with family members, witnesses, the survivors themselves, and by reviewing pre-existing medical records of these patients. Symptoms starting immediately before sudden cardiac arrest were not considered because they would have been unlikely to lead to any early preemptive action or intervention. Overall, 1,099 patients were included, of whom 985 or 90% died and 114 or 10% survived. Symptoms could be assessed in 839 of these patients. Symptoms preceding the event were present in 430 or 51% of patients. No sentinel symptoms could be found in 409 or 49% of these patients. The most common types of symptoms recorded in this study were chest pain, dyspnea, influenza-like symptoms, and syncope or palpitations, with chest pain being by far the most common one. So 199 patients, or 46%, had chest pain, 78, or 18%, had experienced dyspnea, 41, or 10%, had influenza-like symptoms, and 22, or 5%, had syncope or palpitations. Chest pain was the most common symptom in men. 54% of male patients in the study had chest pain, and dyspnea was the most common symptom in females, with 31% of females experiencing it. Now, what's interesting is that patients who had chest pain often also had other symptoms, most notably dyspnea. In fact, 33% of patients with chest pain also had dyspnea. What's really interesting is that, on the other hand, if patients didn't have chest pain, then they only had one complaint. So, only dyspnea, only syncope, or only influenza-like symptoms. When the authors looked at the time trend of symptom onset, they found that in 22% of patients, symptom onset could be tracked to less than one hour prior to cardiac arrest. In 48% of patients, symptoms took place between one and 24 hours prior. In 25% of patients, it was one to seven days prior. And in 5%, it was one to four weeks prior to sudden cardiac arrest. So 70% of symptoms occurred in the day before the event and 95% took place in the week before the event. The authors then looked if calling 911, which is the emergency telephone number in the US, was associated with survival to hospital discharge. What they found was that patients who called the emergency number, or for whom it was called, had a survival rate of 32% compared to 6% in patients in whom 911 wasn't called. So callers were five times as likely to survive, even after adjustment for major confounders. The p-value was below 0.001 in that regression. So according to the authors, there are three major take-home messages from this paper. Number one, the frequency of warning symptoms in these patients is relatively high. You saw that 51% of patients experience warning symptoms. Number two, these warning symptoms are frequently ignored. Two-thirds of patients did not seek medical attention for them. 
And number three, doing something about these symptoms early on, calling an ambulance, seeing a doctor, can significantly increase your chance of survival. It's of note to say that over 90% of patients had recurring symptoms. So they were not just singular symptoms, but recurring symptoms. And even though they were recurring, these patients didn't do anything about them. So I think we should really educate our patients and the public about these findings. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon.